What is up guys, you got Not The Worst here, bringing another Black Desert online video, and today we are taking a look at the Awakening Lawn Endgame uh, PvE guide. Now, if you are familiar with any of my other guides in the past, or the more recent uh, DK ones that I've been updating, uh, I now have spreadsheets that I'm going to link to as well, so that these can be updated over time without having to do whole new videos very often, and it can also expand upon uh, things that are already in there, um, like specific uh, setups for different grind zones, since it's not exactly a one-to-one -one comparison in today's BDO. So there's a link to that in the description. Everything that's covered in this video is already in that spreadsheet. Uh, you may see things uh, that get added over time, depending on how much I play on uh, long term. Um, so just keep an eye out for that. Uh, but with that piece covered, let's just jump right in, get the spreadsheet up, and we're going to take a look at the Lightstone options. All right, our Lightstone options are probably what are going to vary the most from spot to spot because spots to spots differ, differ in what the mobs have to offer and what you want to be running. Um, these are actually the same setups that we use in the DK world because it's quite the same. The biggest thing to take away from it, this is that uh, we no longer have the heavy usage of Deathblow. There may be some future instances where it makes sense to run it, but as far as overall DPS goes, be thanks to the changes in our add-on setups, getting access to uh, crit at 30% up, being up 100% of the time, uh, changes what we want to do a bit since there's only a skill or two off of Awakening Lawn that aren't going to be hit virtually max crit. That being said, if you just want a set to run and you don't really want to get specific into the grind zone that you're at, our generic setup uh, options here you could run something like vicious shadows or all out attack there's of course other options you could run that uh, are more budget friendly but as we're focused on end game pve here that's more where you want to go truthfully crutching just those at any grind spots not necessarily the way that you're going to want to go about actually maximizing um, your lightstone uh, damage that you can get out of it you see things like tongue ruins and dark seekers uh, offering all out attack which edges out the uh, the wilds at those zones since they are 1100 ap and functionally a lawn cannot hit hit 1100 AP in the current state of the game. I believe only Sage can do that um, without a Z or E buff up um, at the time. So because of that, the Wilds actually isn't going to quite eke out all out attack. It is pricey to pick that up with two strike stones. And I will tell you the, the damage difference isn't massive between the two. So running the Wilds demi human in those setups is totally fine. Uh, the Wilds um, human damage is pretty much uh, undisputed at Giants. If you're there, you should be running it um, at, at Ever, any way that you can, and that is because of the 5% AP cap, so not much of a choice under there. Uh, Gaifun, we have the Wilds, Kama Sylvia. Of course, you could also run Vicious Shadows as well. You'll find that uh, the Wilds actually outperforms Vicious Shadows by just a little bit, but again, not a massive difference. Uh, Thornwood is pretty undisputed. Uh, the Wilds, um, because you can hit the AP cap here, if you're not, All Out Attack is going to edge that out a bit if you're willing to lose the DR off of it. And then for City of the Dead, Crocodile's Tooth is undisputed uh, king for that one because you want to maximize down attack damage and one shot with the down attack. So fairly straightforward there. Let's get into the crystals and talk about what we're using for that. Okay, so crystal sets, we can see I just have the one entered uh, for now, and uh, I may expand on that, but the thing is these are all uh, fairly similar, at least um, things outside of Gyphon. Uh, in a generic setup, I know I have this one labeled Dark Seekers. This is functionally the same as a generic setup, except I would recommend maybe dropping one of these Red Fang crystals for an additional Viper uh, to get the extra accuracy there. She does have a really nice evasion shred, so along with your add-ons. Um, in some cases, maybe no Vipers are even needed, uh, but that would be my recommendation if you, again, you're looking for a generic setup, not grinding anywhere specific, don't want to worry about calcing out your accuracy, uh, your hit rate, and that sort of thing, then run this exact setup swap a red fang for a viper and you'd be set to go if you're looking to do tungrad ruins i would run something identical to this setup actually um, and depending on your accuracy uh, set up on the rest of your gear uh, you could potentially even drop that viper if you're grinding at dark seekers uh, your mileage may vary on that one so uh, yeah that's pretty straightforward for that there's not a whole lot to talk about there it's nothing uh, out of the ordinary rebellious spirit goes in virtually every pve set uh, we like the corrupted crystal set over the darkness for place like dark seekers and tungrad ruins just because of the way that lawn's aoe is dealing damage tends to edge out and again if you're in a generic setup you're just always going to want to run corrupted over the uh, darkness option all crads best in slot pve getting attack speed accuracy and pve damage off of it pretty insane um, in a generic setup we'll have two vipers just to kind of cover our accuracy bases if we want to be lazy and not really calc anything out one red fang is going to give us access to maximum crit uh, when we are fully buffed with our costume added in there. 
Uh, again, ultimate Macalods, just best in slot PvE, giving us extra damage. And even more damage out of the Brutal Decimation, 7 monster AP and 1% back attack per crystal. And then, of course, Garen's tier. If you don't have one, a Garen's crystal is fine. If you have a Bong Water tier, you can throw that in there as well. Um, in place of it, it's it's kind of up to you there. But uh, Garen's tier is going to be best in slot, uh, pretty much undisputed at that point. So... With that covered, let's talk about the add-ons before we get into the rotation and start seeing how everything's going to tie together. All right, so for add-ons, I do have these labeled as Dark Seeker. I could actually just change this name to generic because it honestly works the same. In fact, I'll do exactly that. Um, the cool thing about add-ons in modern-day BDO, ever since we just got the recent add-on changes, these aren't really that important with how you set them up the idea is that you're going to want your your super important stuff critical hit rate attack speed and then monster damage all of your self buffs in the very early amount for it then you want your debuffs um in the around the center like your uh minus dp skill and then your modifiers uh to tie that in the thing is that you're going to have 100 uptime on all of these skills once you've pressed three four skills you have everything applied and it's going to stay applied the entire hour that you're going uh, thanks to the way they change and also because Lon's cooldowns are very quick um, and you're just moving from uh, skill to skill. She also has very high attack speed thanks to her flailing blade skill giving an additional 18% attack speed. You, you burn through these skills very quickly. You apply your skill add-ons really really fast so essentially what i'm saying here is you could pretty much take this and modify it slightly to any degree that you wanted to um and come out with virtually the same result on this class just because of the nature of how fast those skills are coming out and the uh, awesome buff changes that we got to how skill add-ons are applied these are catered to the skill rotation that we're going to be looking so if you do want to change the add-ons make sure you adjust the skill rotation accordingly and vice versa if you're changing the skill rotation um you do want to change the add-ons at least the order on there it's very min maxi honestly at that point because like i said this is pretty much going to cover you for uh, virtually any spot outside of like needing extra human damage at giants or something like that or maximizing where you put your back attack for gyphon but yeah this will get you by pretty much anywhere so let's go ahead and take a look at the skill rotation and tie everything together all right so i do have the rotation mapped out on the spreadsheet if you want to check that out but for uh purposes here we're going to actually watch it in video and then i have a demo set for um after these segments so you can kind of check it out uh just a heads up the, de the demo is actually done at dark seekers uh as instead of a generic zone which would be something more like hex um just because that's where i was grinding at the time when i bothered tagging lawn so that's the footage that we have the uh com the rotation there is almost similar i just have moved uh, where bleeding hearts gets used um that has to do with cooldown rotation moving pack to pack at dark seekers um so yeah check out the spreadsheet if you want to use specific for that it's very similar to this one and the add-ons work functionally the same but anyways, without any more, uh, this class is not going to be using any of our Robum skills. We're also not going to be using any pre-awaken uh, because we're awaken lawn and we don't care about those skills anymore. We have everything we need uh, outside of that kit. So we just start off with a simple engagement. It's eradication and then you can press uh, left mouse button if you're on PC, if you're on console. Sorry, I don't know the input. Um, it's an additional attack. I have it marked as a flow. Uh, on the sheet it's technically not a flow it's just you can press lmb and you do an additional attack it's very simple just an engage to get us in there deadly dance is next and you'll notice that i have frontal guard on that um that's not 100 required that's what i like to have especially for dark seekers and tongue Red ruins uh is really handy there um the other option as far as pve goes that you could run i don't really like it for eradication since you're going to be using that for engage anyways and then you could throw protection on Fuhrer, but this and mangler are super long cooldowns that aren't going to get used quite as frequently as the others uh, uh, and Deadly Dance gets used easily twice as much since it has a very low cooldown. Um, it's also why it has our skill add-ons uh, tied into that because it's going to be keeping us up all the time. So I recommend Deadly Dance in these setups. You may find instances where you want to use Fury or something like that. I'd be shocked in PvE if you're ever using uh, Eradication, to be quite honest. I don't think that needs any protection when you're engaging. After that, you're going to do Flailing Blades. And then what you're going to see happen, because I don't have a target, is a little bit different. So Flailing Blades, and then it goes into Tailspin, and then the Tailspin Flow as well. If you're on PC, you just hold RMB to do all of that. So you'll hold RMB to engage Flailing Blades. You can actually keep holding RMB. You'll see I keep Flailing Blades. Uh, if you engage on a target, it pulls you to the target. That's actually more of a teleport. You don't even see a pull animation. You teleport to the target from where it hits, and then you'll immediately start using tailspin and then it's flow skill as well so for me since i'm not hitting a target i'm gonna have to actually put the input uh, on it to then do tailspin and then it does the flow immediately after um, so right after that we're going to apply bleeding hearts and this is going to give us our dp debuff along with tied in on all of our other uh, super spiffy add-ons our mobs are debuffed we're fully buffed and now we can just shred from this point so we're going to bleeding hearts and then i'm immediately going to go into 
uh, Blood Moon Twist and Mangler. Again, if you're on PC, it's the same input. So uh, be a little bit careful when you LMB RMB to Bleeding Hearts. If you hold it, it'll actually trigger Mangler, which is fine. It's not the end of the world, but uh, then trying to go back into Blood Moon Twist, you'd probably want to skip it because the animation's a little funky coming off of the back of a Mangler, whereas you can just hold the F key and it ties into Mangler directly. Again, if you're on console, uh, I have the skill names up for you, but you'll have to kind of figure out exactly what those hold down inputs are. I imagine whatever the same button for Blood Moon Twist is, you just hold for Mangler as well, likely works. So Bleeding Hearts into Blood Moon Twist into Mangler. Um, this is where we really start dealing damage since we have everything debuffed and everything going. So Taunting Death's going to give us our modifiers. Then we're just going to Bridal Despair. Um, we have a BSR version. Forgot to lock that. Nice. And then Fuhrer's going to go off. It's second half of it is protected there, which is kind of nice. From here, uh, depending on your AP and where you're grinding, you may just kill the uh, packs at that point. Um, that's pretty much it. If you need a little bit of cleanup, I've added a few skills in there for you that won't mess up your kind of seamless uh, PvE rotation that, that you're looking for. So if they're not dead after Fury, you can go right back into Deadly Dance, Flailing Blades again, Tailspin again with the Flow and a Bleeding Hearts from there, and then that'll link us right back up to the beginning, and you can see that works flawlessly right back in without worrying about the Deadly Dance cooldown. You may have to play with a little bit if you have E or Z buff up and you're still needing to use cleanup skills at the end. Um, your Deadly Dance might be a little bit uh, off. If that's the case, it's no big deal. Just do Flailing Blades into the Tailspin chain first and then do Deadly Dance after because it'll be back up uh, and then it'll be fixed on your next rotation around. That kind of depends again on your AP. Higher AP at certain zones is going to clear a little quicker and when you have that E or Z buff, um, and in which case you won't need the cleanup skills. If you're not and you might need those last few cleanup skills, the Deadly Dance might be off a little bit. So just kind of be aware of that. So I'll go ahead and just do uh, all of it again kind of together to go through it. Um, just be aware the Flailing Blades doesn't hit an actual target so it'll look a little bit different for you into our tiny death bridal despair get our fear our second half is protected for us and then we can clean it up if we need to and then we are right back to the beginning and there you go that is uh that is our seamless rotation so uh, do it that what you want to do. Try that out. Um, like I said, in the demo that's coming up towards the end, I'm actually at Dark Seekers. It is slightly different as noted on the spreadsheet. Uh, it's just that Bleeding Hearts and Mangler are further down in the list. And again, that has to do with, as you'll see in the video, pack to pack, moving from one pack to the other. Mangler would end up on cooldown if I have it a little too early in the rotation. Uh, so I played with that a bit till I moved it around. But it'll still give you an idea of what you're doing and what it actually looks like uh, hitting some mobs. So be sure to check that out. Uh, with that said, that's going to be it for this video. If you did enjoy it, be sure to like it. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe so you get notifications when new videos go live. And if you'd like to catch me playing live, there's a link to my Twitch page in the description down below. Jump on over there, drop a follow so you get notifications for that as well. With that said, that's going to be it for this one. I want to thank everybody for watching, and I will see you next time.